unheard of. What is up, everybody? Yep, we are back. You <laughs> know we said we'd be, be back sooner than we are. It's your two favorite boys here at Unheard Of. Uh, I'm Jared with ABG on the left side of your screen, if you were watching. No, he's... And maybe the left side of your ears, if you're listening. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it's uh, It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, this has this been our our longest our longest break. Probably, yeah, it's been like six weeks, something like that. The longest hiatus. Um, yeah, longest we're back hiatus. for another one. New, new, I heard of, new, I heard of. Somebody pressed the button. Um, we know this, the street's been needing this, so we so we came back to y'all for another one. But um, yeah, I think we got a. Uh, a good, a good show lined up uh, for everybody. Um, but uh, starting now, Jared, um, what have we, what have you been up to since, since our little break? A lot, um, and not a lot, like actually going on. I mean, when you have two young kids, um, <laughs> somehow everybody at a certain point just gets sick. All the time, and uh, we we've we've done the math because this year it's been crazy since Trace got into preschool this year. So now they're both in schools and they're different schools also, so they don't go to the same place. But um, since January, and we're on a lucky streak right now with two straight weeks uh, weekends, but two uh, almost, straight weekends, yeah, two straight weekends, no sickness, but. Literally every other weekend, somebody was getting sick. Um, and during our break, there was a couple stretches where um, I think Jaden wasn't feeling good one weekend, and then it was Trace, and then it was even me. I got sick one weekend and couldn't even do the show. I got a gastrointestinal infection or something like that, which is a crazy word for saying it's an adult stomach bug, essentially. Um but Trace got it, and Trace only had symptoms for a day, you know, and he passed it. But then I got it, and I had this thing for, like, four days, and it wasn't letting up. Um, and this is where my this story comes being, into play. This is being your ass. Yeah, it was killing me. I mean, I thought something else was wrong, you know. I was like, okay, Trace gave this to me, but... You know, he got over this in a day. So what's wrong with yeah, me? Yeah, so it can't be that. It wasn't that bad for him. What's going on yeah. with me? It's, and, it's, uh, that. it's your old body, dude. He's got he's got a young immune system. I know, I know. But so I went to the doctor to confirm this, right? I went to the urgent care. And they were doing all kinds of tests. But because of what was going on inside of me, they essentially suggested to put a finger or maybe one or two, probably one, in my rectum. And uh Okay. Okay. Did you did <laughs> <laughs> I knew I wasn't gonna get through it without laughing. But uh Did you uh did did you go through with the with the the rec rectum finger? I did. I did. He did uh, <laughs> yes. I, uh, <laughs> I'm a man's man, and if the doctor says it's in the best interest, <laughs> then I do it. I'm a man's man, so if a man says he wants to go in there... You well, know, it wasn't a man. It wasn't a man. It, it was, was a lady a, who, who did the business? Yeah, yeah. Okay, but, um, um, Jared, can I, can I ask you a personal question? Yeah, yeah. So what's the, uh, what's the, what's the grooming like down there? Do you, uh, Usually, usually shape shape it up, or is it? Uh, <laughs> look, the look says it all. Everybody, you don't even have to hey, answer that question. Um, look, let's just say, I trim my nose hairs, um, <laughs> and you know some other stuff stays clean, but there's just some areas you can't get to. Uh, <laughs> so okay, okay, but uh, um. Well, 
we don't have to go too much into the the record if well, we don't want to. Yeah, we can go a little more in detail. I'm already here, but you know, we're she, already here. <laughs> she says, "All right, I think it's in the best interest that I do a, a rectal exam." I said, "Okay, doc, what does that entail?" Um, she says, "Well, you know, I'm gonna get my finger. And I'm gonna get some KY jelly, and we are going to, you know." test what you got going on up there, you know, get little bits and pieces here. Um, <laughs> yeah, they're going to be pulling back bits and pieces or something. Yeah. Um, but that's not even the funny part, you know, like, I'm like, okay, you know, I'm already, I'm already signed up for this. But then I ask her, I'm like, what is the best position for this? You know, like, in your opinion, what is the most comfortable where this isn't going to, you know, feel like a lot of pain to me and she said well the best position in my opinion to not feel discomfort is to lie on your side in the fetal position so i'm like <laughs> on the side you know in the in the bed like this and then she's like all right breathe in i'm like <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> So so was it a was it a um was it a smooth um procedure? Did did you not even notice anything happen? No, I noticed. I noticed. Um it there was still discomfort no matter the fetal position. It was not comfortable and it's not something I would recommend. And at the end of it, uh test came back healthy because it was just an infection big stomach bug so i didn't even need to get my rectum probed it you got probed even... <laughs> it just got you're, probed you're... because of the symptoms yeah your uh your rectum got probed needlessly and there's about no way 20, about 20 I'm... years too early yeah yeah so essentially i had a prostate exam way too early uh <laughs> <laughs> but you know what Hey, when you think you're on that that doorstep of death, and you ain't you feeling too good, you thought you was gonna die, bro. I mean, not not like actually gonna die, but I just I, I felt like you. garbage. Yeah, you just and feel like you feel like like crap. I'm like, hey, do all the tests, you know. I just need to know what's going on. <laughs> um, and I'm, you know what? It's not something I recommend, but had to do it and I'm not going to be able to play any of this audio in previews because it's going to sound so weird uh, as a promo or anything like imagine this on Facebook oh you got your rectum probed <laughs> and, like they start screening that <laughs> you I don't yeah, wait, I'll, wait, I'll, let me, I was abducted me, by aliens let me uh, <laughs> let me give you a perfect clip that you that, that we can use for promos hold on you got your what? 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 <laughs> yes. I got my what? Whatted. <laughs> perfect, bro. Perfect. That, that, we can use that. And that'll, that'll, um, uh, that'll make people want to watch to see what, what uh, you got done. Yeah, yeah. So I... And, you know, I have the I have the dairy allergy, but it's, it's tough to... Uh, it's tough to fully stay away from it, you know, because a lot of things have like small bits of cheese on there and stuff like that. But yeah. because of that, she recommended, you know, trying to stay away from any dairy. Like I still don't drink milk. I don't have ice cream at all, but you know, there's just some things I can't help it. Like there's a little bit of cheese on stuff. I, I eat it and it's not that big of a deal, but straight up dairy, like yogurt, milk, ice cream, that stuff will kill me. Um, not literally, That's but on the toilet. That's crazy uh, too, bro. Cause like, I mean, I'm sure most of our viewers and slash listeners um, know Jared, but like, this man used to be the milkman, dog. I was, I was. <laughs> Jared, I mean, Jared used to used to drink milk like it was going out of style, boy. Let's put this in perspective, right? Um, before I found out about the dairy allergy, um, we were buying three gallons of milk a week for our house. And 
now that I don't drink any milk, we buy one gallon a week for the house. Jerry was drinking two gallons of milk a week, man. But uh like I said, I instantly stopped the straight dairy when, you know, I found out about that. But she had said, you know, try your best to not eat anything with dairy for a few days. So I said, okay. Um, so I made a quesadilla with like vegan cheese that I found at the store, which was actually really good. The vegan cheese tasted like Velveeta, the way it melted. Um, hey, man, vegan vegan food is good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And people will tell you that it's not. And stuff. It's good. Yeah. Um, but we haven't found a good mozzarella vegan option because Tiff made like a pizza and she made me a separate pizza with the vegan mozzarella, you know? And it didn't taste bad, but it also wasn't great, you know? Like it was, yeah. it was like a weird taste. And so I, I kept eating, I had like three slices just because I was like, you know, if I eat this enough, I'll think I'll like it. But, uh, I think we just got to find another option of vegan cheese. Um, <laughs> Maybe if I eat enough, it'll be good. Well, you know, that's that's like what I try to do with a lot of stuff. When I went to basic training, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'm a, I'm a picky guy for the most part. I don't, I don't eat like a ton of food. But like when I went to basic, I don't have a lot of options. You know, like what they serve is what they serve. So if I wasn't eating, I just wasn't eating. So I... I eventually just started eating food that tasted like crap. And then after a while, I'm like, yeah, this isn't so bad, you know? <laughs> is, there, uh, is there any food that you changed your mind on, like, since you've been, like, maybe a kid or something? Um. Yeah. Yeah. Fish. Um, Fish? Oh. Yeah. That's changed my mind a little bit. Like, you didn't um, like any fish at all when you were younger? Yeah, I didn't like any fish. Oh, wow. But, Tiff cooks fish pretty good, um, so I don't mind it. And uh, yeah, that's probably the biggest one. But you know, yeah. And I didn't mean to go off on a huge tangent, but oh, you're good. You're good. I'm you know, sorry. What's uh, what's your what's your last few weeks been like, man? Man, you know, I really, really, really wish I could come on here and say that. You had I your rectum probe? A, a funny, yeah. I'm not <laughs> topping a rectum probing. Um, I'm not no, topping man, just, a rectum probing. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't top that. Um, oh, but um, no, nah, man. I've just been. I've just been working, man. Um, working and and trying to trying to uh, plan this wedding, man. That's uh, that's basically it. And um. Nice. Then you've been dealing with your stuff, and so we just kind of haven't been able to like find times that works for everybody, and or maybe somebody's doing something, something like that. But like, no, I've just been, I've been doing the same old things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's um, I said we're on a two week streak here, and now the kids are starting to get out of school for the summer, so. Here's to a healthy summer, you know. Uh, that, yeah, that's true, man, because kids are, we said this before on the show, kids are nasty, bro. Kids are Petri dishes, you know. Yes, bro, and then they, they just, they, they're nasty, and then they just swap all the nastiness to each other, back and forth. Yeah, pretty much what they do. Um, <laughs> but, you know, my, my rectal probe, would make a really good movie title and even though it's not the name of a movie title we are going to be talking about some movies that we've been watching and movies that we're excited to see in the summertime summer 2023 is going to be a good one i was you ain't lost it you ain't lost a step yet Jared. hey that's not the only thing i haven't lost I haven't lost anything in my rectum <laughs> um yes there there are some movies some movies I hope my boss never I... plays this episode back. I really hope nobody <laughs> <laughs> from my work organization plays this back. Hey but if yeah, you, if, yeah. You, if you if you work with Jerry and you and you, and you see this, no you didn't. <laughs> you uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but um yeah, some, yeah there's some uh, there's some 
there's some there's some movies man and a lot of them and i feel like a lot of them are coming out like quick succession big hits yeah. um or at least projected big hits and um my in my opinion the biggest hit of them is about to be the um across the spider-verse movie oh yeah did you know and, um, that's the longest animated film in theaters like, like ever all time yeah it's because it's i'm pretty sure it's two and a half hours and no animated feature ever hits that mark but this is already wow. going to be like a two-parter you know so yeah, 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 yeah. They had to split the movie, so dang. What uh what's the third movie called? The third one? I, don't even I think know. Well, I don't know if they changed it because it was gonna be part one and part two, and then they changed this one to uh across the spider verse. Um, and then the next one is something different. You know? Yeah, that's what I, that's what I thought. But um no, across the spider verse, man. This this movie looks like it's I mean it's definitely up in the ante from the from the last movie. But I'm I'm really excited to see how they balance all of yeah. these different Spider-Man characters. Like it's a, it's like hey, cuz you see you see the promo and everything. It's yeah. thousands of them. It's it's <laughs> well, you you already know though that there it's going to be a focus of just a couple of them and Oh, you know, yeah, yeah. The, even, the, even, I'm sorry. What? Um, even I was just going to say the big Spider Verse stuff is going to be small, you know, yeah. like the council and the whole Spider Verse platform with uh, Miguel O'Hara. Like all those Spider people are probably not going to be that big of a deal outside of Miguel O'Hara himself. Yeah, but I mean, just even the, the new characters like yeah. um, Miguel and. Um, I forget which which spider person this is the the one that's pregnant. Um, the one that's pregnant. Yes. The one I that Gwen's talking about. And then she's like, I wish you were my parent. And she's like, huh? And she's like, huh? No. That clip. I don't know if you've seen it. No, I don't think I've watched a lot of the TV clips. I know there's like a I don't know why I can't remember his name, but there's an, I think a like an Indian one is going to be part of the cast because there is a TV spot featuring him. And it's the pregnant one. She's not the one that has the, uh, the webs the coming out of each thing. fingers, right? Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I've only seen two TV spots like for separate characters. Okay. Um, but, um, yeah, I just feel like just like the sheer size of all the spider people in this, like it's like taking, taking um, no way home, no way home, yes, no way home, and turning it to a thousand. You know what I'm saying? And so, so it's gonna I mean, be it's gonna be real interesting. I, uh, they, I think they showed the Spider Punk without yeah. his mask. And that was that was really cool. I like uh, um I like this I, I like that like little shot of him. Um good luck you about to say something. No, no. No. Okay. And then <laughs> seeing uh uh Peter Peter B. Parker with um Mayday, like that's yeah. that's gonna be just like too cute, little spider baby. Um yeah. I'm 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 really excited for this movie and I don't I don't know for a fact but I know it's been a a bunch of speculation especially with that um the little tag he says like uh um you've been a you, you've been a pain in my butt especially that don't get me started on that nerd from uh earth Nine yeah. nine 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 and uh Doctor Strange, like yeah. but is it like if they if they go like MCU with this like maybe in like the third movie or something like that that would be pretty cool. I mean I think uh a lot of people say that Toby Andrew and Tom are gonna be in it. I imagine it's gonna be a super quick cameo. You know like they'll have one or yeah. two voice lines and that'll be it. Um. 
but no, man, the movie looks really good. And it, I mean, hey, this could be controversial, maybe not, but the first Spider Verse film already could, you know, easily have an argument for the best Spider Man film if you include live action films too. The Into the Spider Verse, because that one's really good. Um, it is, but dang. I don't know if I would make it. I would put it as the best live action though, man. It, Them well, Toby be, movies is, is classics, bro. And not know, saying but, not not saying that uh, Into the Spider Verse had a classic, but dang. it might be my number two. Like if I rank all the Spider Man films, I think Spider Man Two with Toby still at the top, but then Spider Verse is like right under that for me in terms of enjoyment and everything. And it's a movie I can rewatch and really like. So, um, but I did get the title. Uh, this one, you know, is called Across. And then in 2024, the one, the third one is going to be called Beyond the Spider Verse. Beyond the Spider Verse. Yeah, see, and that's another reason why people are saying it's going to be uh, like on some MCU type stuff because of, because yeah. uh, it's beyond. Spider Verse, and it's I like that they can do the Spider Verse, but at the same time, it's it's written so well. Like it's fresh storylines, it's really good writing, um, and you can do that when you focus on the story. And you know the all the other characters are basically in the background because it's it's still Miles' story. And, yeah, um, like I think they're baiting and switching us, you know because a lot of the previews are showing Miguel O'Hara as a bad guy. Uh, but I do think ultimately the spot, which they haven't really focused on a lot, is going to end up being like the main bad guy in the film. Uh, I think that's going to be a little bait and switch. You know, that's just one of my predictions. No lie, I got to admit, I have no clue who the spot even is. Like, I, I haven't seen... That, yeah. that character and anything before I don't know if you if you know. No, I don't. Uh, do you think it's like an original? Uh, Probably not character for them. Uh, it, it can't be, but like I I don't know. I just haven't seen anything about the spot. Yeah, but yeah, man, they're just really good. It's it's like the one thing Sony does well, so they should stick to animation. Because I'm already not looking forward to their Craven the Hunter film. That's coming out later this year. Is it coming out this the, year? Who's it, who's in that? Uh, Aaron Tyler Johnson. Okay, okay, he's playing yeah. Craven. Yeah, yeah, man. He Sony just doesn't know what they're doing, like making their own films outside <laughs> of Spider Man. You know, I still haven't even seen Morbius. You don't want to. Um, <laughs> that's that's the general reaction of the film. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's up there for worst movies released ever, from what I hear. <laughs> but um, I have seen uh, Quantum Mania, which I which I do feel yeah. like people did like kind of um, kind of shit on unnecessarily. You know, what I'm it's saying? not it's not as bad as Love and Thunder, and honestly, to me, it's almost the same as Doctor Strange too. It's just uh, it's it's not terrible, but it's also kind of forgettable. Like the best parts in that film is Kang, you know, like uh, not even Ant Man, which is fine, but uh, it's got a lot of CGI too. Like it's a oh, yeah. lot of CGI. I mean, yeah, because they're in the in quantum in the in the quantum verse or what is it called? Yeah, you know, quantum realm. But yeah, the quantum realm. <laughs> I think. Um, Still, you know, like a lot of films can do practical things. Like James Gunn does practical effects in Guardians films, even though they're in space. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Um, you you just saw you just saw it recently, right? When it came to Disney Plus. Which one, Quantum Mania? Quantum Mania, yeah. That's actually one we saw in theaters because. Um, oh, you saw it in theaters. Mom was here, and so me and Tiff watched it yeah oh yeah we were, we were we were talking about that after i watched it um yeah i really i really do like that one part when he's just like when he has to like become a, a hive mind basically with yeah. his uh 
with his self with and like basically yeah. he's like he is ants like a whole colony of ants yeah like that was that was really i think that was that was done really well um one thing one thing that that was weird about it was like he had to be like told not to focus on the on the other ones but like mm -hmm. the wasp was just like does this is this like a testament to her razor sharp focus like she never really gave her her other selves a second thought. Yeah, hmm. it was good. I really, I really enjoyed that scene. Uh, in my opinion, that was like my favorite scene of the whole movie, um, other than like the Kang stuff. But, but yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, um, Jonathan Majors might be out of that role. That's crazy, bro. Like. <laughs> How do All you, his like, uh, stories in the news right now, you know? With, like I said, it's crazy to me because, like, if I was a celebrity, I would be so far out the way. Like, I already feel like I'm, I'm already an out-the-way person as it is, um, just me personally. But, but um, yeah, if I was a celebrity, I wouldn't let nothing nothing mess that that big uh box office money up bros hell no they're fools man they're fools i mean but it's like and you know this wasn't supposed to be a topic but uh it's like um john Morant. you know if you're paying me 30 million dollars a year you ain't gotta tell me twice to put the guns out of videos like i got no problem yeah that's uh, crazy to me too <laughs> like it's like as soon as the camera come out, he ready to pull it out. But um, dude, all the all the like TikTok videos and everything about John Morant have been so funny. Yes, bro. Uh, the one I with, saw uh, one Chris Rock in Rush Hour, where he's just like taking a picture with his gun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> or that one from uh the Suicide Squad. Uh, I forgot what you said. Oh, his character's name yeah, was already. Yeah. But uh, when it was like, hey, look, let me, let me, uh, I think the caption was, let me take a video real quick or hop on my live real quick. And then yeah. it's like John Morant and this is like, uh, Idris Elba putting together his gun, bro. <laughs> yeah. Man, dude. Yeah, bro. But like, I, like, I guess at the end of the day, slavery is still human, you know, they, they still gone. I have the same issues that everybody else has just on like the, the, the public on a huge public scale. Yeah. But, like yeah. still, I feel like you should know, bro. Like at the end of the day, like, yo, this is, this might mess up some stuff for me because I'm a public figure. Well, I mean, Jonathan Majors, what killed him to me, that first story came out, right? He got arrested for, the domestic assault, but then there was video evidence that actually proved he was innocent, uh, at least on that night. But then a whole bunch of other stuff started coming out the wind, you know. And uh, I was like, man, dude, what's crazy is he was he was like starting to become one of my favorite actors too. Is like anything he was in, I was trying to go see. Like Creed three, I watched it. You know, Quantumania. There was that uh, that other movie where he's a pilot. I think it's called Devotion. Um, Maybe. He played like a World War II pilot or something. And then uh, there was, what was the other one that I watched? Oh, The Harder They Fall, which was the Western movie on Netflix. Yeah, the Western. He did. Yeah. Um, which is also yeah, underrated. I mean, I, that one's a really good movie. I really, I, I like, I like Jonathan Majors too. I really liked him um, in that Lovecraft uh, country oh, yeah. on, yeah. um, HBO, and that might be the only really, really thing I've seen him in, other than that, like other than uh, Quantumania. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if you if you stand in your own way, you know, yeah, ain't, ain't much they can do for you. Ain't, no, ain't, ain't much they can do. I'm just saying, um, man. You know, you ain't gotta tell me twice. I'm I'm a guy that gets in my head real quick, especially like the John Moran thing where. It was like less than two months from his first situation to the next one. Like he sat there to Adam Silver 
was like, yeah, I'm going to be good. You ain't got to worry about it no more. And his, him and his idiot friends, you know, like just doing stupid stuff is going to keep getting them in trouble. Now his friend, his friend tried to help him. His friend yeah, tried he to put the, the camera back real yeah, quick. Yeah, he pulled it back as soon but, as he like, recognized it. But why do the camera uh, in the first place? Just to just I, to show that your buddy's John Morant. That's that's true. You don't you like you really don't even have to be um recording, but like also don't pull out a gun, you know? Like because like I mean it's and like it's perfectly legal to own a gun, you know, perfectly fine. But it's just that when you get to that level of where John Moran is at, and then the NBA, they they uh, how they want you to be portrayed and everything like that, you know. Well, sometimes, man. You know, Skip Bayless was actually talking about a lot of people forgot that he was in trouble for other stuff before the first gun incident, because he had that laser pointing incident. You know, where he was like pointing a laser or something. I can't remember what it was at a security guard or something like that, you it know, was, on the page. It was somebody like when they were at the, yeah, when they were like leaving yeah. or something, right? And then there was a story before that where at like a shoe store, I think it was a Foot Locker, his mom got into an altercation. And so she calls Ja to come deal with it. And he's like threatening the employee and says, wait till you get off shift. I'm going to be waiting out for you with my piece. And uh, like he's doing all this dumb stuff outside of, uh, you know, the court. And uh, he's, he sounds like one of those guys that is definitely going to stand in his own way, similar to uh, what's happening with Jonathan Majors right now. Um, That's but, crazy. But speaking of uh, problematic uh, superstars, or at least stars, that um, have been given chances and chances, uh, it leads us to our next movie that we're excited for this summer. The Flash. Oh, yes. Ezra Miller. <laughs> and Ezra Miller, yes. Um, Previously known as he, now uses they. Pronouns. they pronouns, yeah. So I want to make sure I'm correct on that, even though they might not deserve that privilege. Um, <laughs> um, a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble from Ezra, too. Which is which is crazy to me, because, like, I, and I feel like I've said this before. I don't know if I've said this before on the podcast. Um but it's so crazy that DC was like, we holding on to this movie. We holding on to this movie. We holding on to this yeah. movie. We got to have this movie. And they um, canceled Batgirl. Yes. But, like, I don't Which know. I can see why, honestly. Yeah. Nah. It's, nah. it's not going to be, like, a star-studded good film, you know? Yeah, but I, I feel like it was it, it would have been cool to see um, um, Brandon Fraser. In that in that movie, that would have been pretty cool. Yeah, it's just in that whole category. It's kind of like the Spider Man spinoffs, like Morbius and stuff. You know, like I don't want to see yeah. Morbius. I don't want to see Craven without Batman, or uh, Craven without Spider Man. Like I don't want to see Batgirl without Batman. They, I thought they had they had Keaton in in that movie. Uh, he might have been in it, you know, but it might have been really I'm short sure. or something. They just said that movie was unwatchable. And, you know, they're not even releasing it on Max or nothing. Um, yeah. And I mean, one day Flash, it'll, probably be, it'll probably get leaked or something. Yeah. Hey, but listen, if if like everybody's saying year, the Flash is good. Yeah, bro, that, that's that's what I'm saying. Um, Which is why like, I'm torn about seeing it, because everybody's saying it's super good. But also, Ezra Miller is kind of a huge douchebag who possibly kidnaps people and puts them in cults and abuses them. So and and um, grooms people and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but like I was um, like I was saying, um, uh, D- DC is like, yeah, we got we got to stick to this movie. And I was just thinking, like, what if this movie is an absolute banger? What if this movie yeah. is an absolute comic book banger? Because like we've, I feel like. like I feel like over time, I feel like you do have more duds with comic book movies, but I feel like they, most of them, like a lot of them just get better and better and better and better. Um, Like, I mean, like the Batman, in my opinion, that's probably one of the best Batman movies ever. And um, 
It was really good. Uh, and I feel like they were only I feel like they were moving in a good direction with with um with Superman and uh stuff like that. Uh but uh I'm not, not one of those Snyder not, fan not, boys. Not, I thought I thought his movies kind of sucked personally. Not Wonder Woman. They 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 moved backwards with Wonder Woman, but uh but um Ooh. I'm sorry. Um whenever uh <laughs> Whenever if they did another Superman movie, especially like when um what what's his name Henry Cavill when he, when he was like yeah. yeah I'm ready I'm ready to do some more Superman <laughs> and then unfortunately he was like go like a week later but uh well that's because of the Rock everybody can blame the Rock from what I read about uh <laughs> DC's whole reset he uh it is it like the Rock power struggle. Is it The Rock's fault, or was it, like, them announcing that James Gunn was running the DCU now? Well, that was partially it, you know, but, like, The Rock came in, and he's like, look, I want to be Robert Downey Jr. for the DC. And so, you know, Black Adam is like a Shazam character, you know? Yeah. Um, but The Rock didn't want to appear in any Shazam films. He didn't want Shazam to appear in his films. He said, if anybody's appearing in my movie, it's Superman. And he's like, essentially, he forced Henry Cavill, not like forced him to be in it, but he forced the producers to put him in it at the end. Um, and it didn't have really big approval because the big guys knew that they were kind of on the way out anyways. Um, yeah. But The Rock was just kind of hoping he could kind of stronghold it and reset, which is also weird because The Flash is, at least this version of it, is still kind of like a Snyder DC character. Yeah. Um so if this movie is really good, what does that do to the new DC that James Gunn is essentially rebooting? I feel like it sets it up. It's going to set up the the, yeah. the new DC because like what you get, um, the Blue Beetle right after that, even though yeah. the Blue Beetle isn't going to be more of like a one-off, um, not the real start to the new DCU, but like, they say that's supposed um, to be good too, because it was it was supposed to go on Max, and then oh, they was yeah. writing it, and it was like this is way too good. Let's put it as a movie. Oh shit! Hell yeah! I like I like that trailer. Yeah. Um, Tell us like I mean, Iron you Man. Know, yeah, you you know you know what they do with with uh the Flash whenever whenever DC needs some some big reboot or something like that, they use the Flash. And so yeah. this is what this is just like the movie, the, the DC's version of that happening. And it, I mean, I feel like it happened at a perfect time, you know, with the ending of the of basically the the Snyderverse and the beginning of this new whatever they're gonna call it that that James Gunn is is uh, working working on. But if this um. Flash movie is as good as uh, it's what Stephen King said it was. Tom Cruise. Uh, I don't know if James Gunn said anything about it yet or not, but um, I don't know if DC has uh, has gotten to these people and compromised them and and uh, made them say good things about this movie for promotion. I don't know, um, but. From what they're saying, it is gonna be a damn banger, and it makes me excited for it at least. Yeah, I mean, Stephen King went out of his way to, you know, talk about this movie, and he never, you know, reviews superhero films. Uh, y'all, y'all, hey, look, Stephen King's Twitter account is nothing but Elon Musk hate. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Politics and Maine, dude. That's it. And he's talking about uh he's talking about the the damn flash. Like, come on, oh, yeah. man. That's gotta be that's gonna be it's gotta be that's gotta say they say something good about the movie at least, you know. That's it, man. I'm um, torn. But I'll, I'll I'm probably gonna see it. Just because, I'm, you know. I'm definitely gonna see it. Michael Keaton Batman. I, I might do a uh a little Thursday nighter for that one. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I did with Guardians of the Galaxy. Also, 
uh, for any, anybody who hasn't seen Guardians of the Galaxy, we're, I mean, we're not, we don't really, uh, we're probably not going to talk about it today because Jared still hasn't seen it. Um, so I'm not going to spoil anything. Baby, but, um, Joe, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will say one thing. After seeing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, and this should be for everybody, that this movie should make you 10 times, 10 times more excited about yeah. whatever DC is about to put out after Blue Beetle. Um, yeah. Because James Gunn did not play around with this Guardians movie, big dog. I'm telling you, like, you're going you gonna to laugh. You're going to cry. Like, all of it. All the emotions, you're going to get it in this movie. And everybody, everybody came out and sh- showed up and showed out in this Guardians movie. Like, yeah. yeah. People are going to like it. And like I said, it should make you 10 times more excited for this new Superman movie. And like I said, anything that, that DC is about to drop. I think there's just a bunch of trolls on the internet, you know, because... I mean, granted, Zack Snyder's Justice League, to me, was actually a good film. Probably his only one um, in the DC. Man of Steel is decent. I'm not going to totally crap on Man of Steel. I like Man of Steel. I just don't see myself watching it again. Yeah, yeah. And I haven't watched it either because it, it was it's also like four hours. You know, it's crazy as long. As long as shit. But... Uh, <laughs> You might as well call it Justice League the series, but uh, yeah, no, I can I, think, I can um, see I can see myself if I'm like having a little get together or something like that at the house or something like that. Might throw on the the black and white <laughs> version of it, you know, just in the background. Uh, yeah, but but no, nah, man, but, I don't know. Sitting down to watch it myself, probably not. I, but like basically what I'm saying is, you know, some of the best reviewed stuff across both universes is James Gunn's films and series. Uh like Peacemaker, really I mean, good. Yeah, I'll say everybody saw what 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 uh, he did with the Suicide Squad and with Peacemaker. So yeah. I mean, if those didn't get you already get you excited for, for what was uh what's gonna be coming, because I mean that wasn't and, and with the Justice League and I'm not not just like the Suicide Squad and uh, yeah. Peacemaker. I, we didn't know, of course, at that time that that James Gunn would end up being, you know, in this position. Now that he is, like, it's, yeah, uh, yeah, it's about to be it's about to be a good time over at DC. Do it. I'm actually then, excited. Like, I'm I'm excited as hell. Um, and then I'm excited for the new. Uh, their the new Joker movie. Oh yeah. Um, well, I don't know, man. I heard it's gonna be a musical. I hope that rumor's not true. I mean, I don't feel like even if it is gonna be a musical, that it's like gonna be like. A, I, I, a, I like a musicals. Paint. Yeah, I don't think it's gonna be like a paint by the numbers musical or nothing like that. Yeah. Um, I think it's more it's more gonna have more musical elements, you know, like. You could call Guardians of the Galaxy a musical um, just because it has a a bunch of music that is just in the score. You know what I'm saying? Um, No, I'm talking like musical as in Joker singing and Harley Quinn singing. I mean, even if they they did do it like that, I feel like it wouldn't. I feel like they, if it's the same director that directed... um, the first Joker, yeah, it is. it's it. They they still would. I feel like they're still gonna know what they're doing. Now, I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I'm 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 really excited for that one. I'm yeah. really excited for the uh, next Batman movie, the uh, Penguin series. That trailer looked real good. Yeah, it did. I'm just again, you know, I, I already kind of have fatigue. On watching all this stuff, so uh, it's really got to pipe my interest, you know, to watch a side character's eight episode season, you know, something like that. Uh, no, but yeah, DC's in good hands. James Gunn, 
uh, you know, they should have promoted him in Marvel, you know, like right under Kevin Feige, because he's literally the best storyteller that Marvel has when it comes to films. And uh, now he's going to go run them. DC. <laughs> yeah. And it, it'll be fun for them. Um, but some of the other stuff, man, I'm excited for this summer. Uh, y'all know Fast and Furious 10 is out. I haven't really watched all the Fast and Furious movies. But that's, you know, a big one coming out this summer. I think uh, I am actually going to be excited for Transformers as well. You know, we've talked about Spider-Verse and Flash. Uh, but I'm actually excited to go see that Transformers film, The Rise of the Beast, too. Rise of the Beast. I don't think I've seen a Transformer movie since the second one of, like, Shia LaBeouf's movies. Oh, man. Um. I still I like just... they're like just good popcorn films, you know, like they're huge action movies that are just fun to watch in a the theater. Yeah, is uh did Michael Bay direct this one too? No, no, they, I would uh... say do they still have Michael Bay doing Transformer movies? After that fourth one with Mark Wahlberg, they like rebooted it essentially. So uh it started off with the Bumblebee movie and now it's taking place chronologically like in the nineties. So oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. It's 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 pretty good. Um yeah, there's there's not a bunch of other big stuff coming out this summer. I saw uh, those films. they got they got a, a, an insidious movie coming out. Um oh, yeah. shout, shout out shout out Colton. Uh Colton yeah. sent me like some TikTok with like a bunch of movies that was coming out this summer. I mean Little Mermaid's oh. coming out. Uh, Oppenheim, Oppenheimer. I'm gonna see that one. Oppenheimer, dog. Hell yeah. yeah. I'm I'm definitely ready to see that. I'm I'm excited. I'm not I'm not one to uh be excited over stuff about like military movies and stuff like that. But this one is is gonna be is gonna it's be not really military, it's like scientists, you know. I mean, yeah, scientists for the military. I mean, yeah, but it's not like you know, guns and war. I mean, yeah, 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 still, but, I mean, um, eh. there, There's also, I saw a really good trailer uh, for, like, a back-to-normal comedy film, you know, that you don't really see anymore. Uh, it's got Jennifer Lawrence in it. It's called No Hard like Feelings. A, rom, the rom-com joint with Jennifer Lawrence? People are Kind of like a rom-com, yeah. But this yeah, one is... People uh, saying that might be pretty good. It's the trailer itself. It's funny, dude. Um, it's it's gonna be rated R, so it's not like a PG thirteen rom com, but uh, yeah. based off a of Craigslist ad that is for real, where you know these rich parents, uh, you know, had their child helicoptered too close as a baby, and they really wanted to get him out of the house, so they wanted a girl to essentially sleep with him to kind of man him up, and that was uh, a. Yeah the basis of the ad that the whole movie is based on. Um, so the movie's based on a Craigslist ad and that, that alone should tell you it could be funny. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah I've heard, I've heard that, that might be pretty good. So I'm, I might be checking that out. You know, you know what? Sometimes I have uh, like personally just have like uh, guilty pleasure movies. Yeah. And uh, they might, Nah, I mean, that might sound weird sometimes, but you want to know what movie I'm excited for and that I want to try to get Odessa to go see, but she's not, she's not taking the bait, unfortunately. I want to, I want to go see that Barbie movie, dude. Oh man, that, that actually looks like it's see, funny too. It looks like it's going to be pretty good. So like, I, I'm, I'm trying to convince her. Dude, but, uh, that. That one trailer or little TV spot where, what is it, Ken, you know, Ryan Gosling's Ken is asking her, so, yeah. you know, you want me to spend the night tonight? And she's like, and do what? It's like, I don't know, really. Like, <laughs> I don't know. And I, <laughs> I think I saw on Twitter where someone was like, that kind of dialogue makes sense. Like, if it's like little kids yeah. talking, to, like, if, this, if, they're, if they're like dolls. And they're yeah. being controlled by the little kids, and the kids are coming up with the dialogue. Like that would make sense. So, um, Mission Impossible, that movie's coming out, the new one, uh, in July. 
Yeah, um, I t- that's the one that's been that, promoted that heavily. Yet. Yeah, I haven't seen the, the trailer for it yet, but I but they said that he jumps off that cliff on that motorcycle with the with the helicopter. I mean, with the, the yeah, uh, that's the video. Ball. That's the video that's made its round like a hundred times already before the movie even premieres. You know, uh, that's crazy. Is but... which like. I guess it, it doesn't even make like I I don't think of Tom Cruise as an action star for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know why. Man. I to, do. To me, you know, like um I mean I guess like one of my uh, one of my more favorite uh Tom Cruise movies uh is that one with Jamie Foxx, uh, Collateral. I don't know if you've ever yeah. seen that. Um and I mean that's a, that's an action movie, um, but I don't I don't know. But every time every time he does a, a like an action movie like the the um the Top Gun movie called? that just came out, um, and now like all the Mission Impossible movies and like him doing his own stunts and stuff like that, like it I feel like it still surprises me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Plus, he's just old. He's old. He's a, he's in a lot of good ones that I remember, like War of the Worlds, um, Edge of Tomorrow. You know. Yeah. Uh, so I think of him as an action star, of course, with the new Top Gun one too. Yeah, I don't know what it is. It just always surprises me when um, <laughs> when he's got a when he's got an action movie coming out. I'm like, damn, that's Tom Cruise. <laughs> Yeah, and he is super old, you know. So, um, that's true, man. still doing his own stunts, man. That's crazy. Yeah, he is. Um, uh, yeah, you think they could swap him out with that guy who was doing that deep fake Tom Cruise stuff? Yeah, maybe, but you know, he's not like a I don't think he's like an actor that they're going to replace in any franchises because he doesn't do. Outside of Mission Impossible films, he doesn't really do movies that go more than like one sequel. So, uh, uh, and I think with this new one, they're gonna have one this year and next year, and that'll be like it for him, is what he's saying. I think. Um, I don't know, man, but I, I like his films too. Those are those are good, just popcorn flicks, you know. Can I bring up a random? It, it kind of has something to do with Tom Cruise. Obviously, because it was a movie he was in, but this is more about Barry. Because, like, you told me that you've been watching. Are you caught up on Barry? Oh yeah, yeah, bro. And I've and I've talked about this with Ethan before. But that spoilers one episode, where, yeah. yeah, spoilers. Yeah, if you got if you guys uh haven't uh been uh if you're not caught up on this last season of Barry, that one scene, bro. <laughs> When Fuchs was in the the prison, and mm-hmm. he was um really mad at Barry, and he was watching he's watching a movie, and then all you hear is music at first, and then you see that he's watching Rain Man with oh, Dustin yeah. Hoffman and and Tom Cruise dude in that one scene when they're walking, and then he realizes that <laughs> that that's his relationship with Barry. And he's like, that's us. That's us. I promise you. I had to pause that that Dude. scene because it was just so funny, bro. Like that. <laughs> like I said, it doesn't really have much of anything to do with anything that we've been talking about. I, it just randomly popped in my head. Fuchs, to me, up until this season, has definitely been good comic relief because uh, – <laughs> Just from the first season alone, where Barry goes outside the hotel room and he's on his phone, and Fuchs is literally getting beat to death get his, in the hotel. Get his ass whooped. <laughs> Bro, uh, Fuchs is just one of those characters where you're like, he just, oh, he's always destined to lose. And that, um, the one episode where it's got, you know, the karate guy and the his daughter, and the girl like bites his face, and he's yes. like, what are you? <laughs> Yeah, he's man. I I like his character, and of course now his character is like super serious. You know, in this last season, there's not a lot of comedy in this season. You know, but I don't think it's supposed to be 
yeah. uh, because of the situation. But anyway, it's still a great show. Um, it still it still has its good funny moments like that like that moment that I was, that I was talking about. Oh, you, the Rain Man scene that was really good. You know what would have made it really dark to me? Um, What's that? Where you know season three closes out and Gene Cousineau shoots his son, who was delivering him his food, and then spoiler, uh, his son is still alive. You know, but if he killed his son, thinking it was Barry, that could have taken it down like a super dark road for the season. Uh, yeah, and it's already dark enough. But I do, I do like that his son. Uh, not like really forgave him so much, but like still yeah. was wanting him in his life because that's that was, was crazy bro when he shot i thought he was gonna shoot uh janice's dad yeah yeah and um then when it turned out to be his son he shot him in the shoulder i was like oh my god yeah and then he just like shoots him and he's like f you and then just runs away <laughs> oh, man. and then like um, i guess you led to believe that he runs away and then he's like just gone to uh what did he say he was in like the middle east or something like that right yeah um yeah. just like right after that he somehow escaped man that was crazy uh yeah folks it's uh that's a good show if y'all haven't watched it uh man a lot of good summer stuff coming out um hope y'all really enjoyed this one it's it's mostly about rectal probes and movies so it's a great episode um to listen to but now before we close out i'm just gonna say some really funny puns that i've been seeing on the internet you know maybe give us three um, okay all right so what was forrest gump's email password what one forest one Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, let me pull up that other one here. I want to be cremated as it is my last hope for a smoking hot body. <laughs> Your last hope for a smoke. Yeah. You definitely get smoking hot. Um, yeah. Then let me get y'all one more here. Um, yeah, and then my final one is I don't trust stairs because they're always up to something. <laughs> so a little a little fun pun to close us out, you know. Uh fun pun, dude. A little ramen. Yeah, fun pun. New segment. <laughs> fun pun. Um uh, Yeah, so we'll get ready to close us down here, you know. Um Really good to be back on the show. Sorry to keep y'all waiting all the time now. You know, I'm not even going to promise y'all are getting one next week because I don't know if you are. Uh, hey, man. Hey, we just say we, we're, making them, we're making them as we can. We're still, we are still enjoying making the show. Um, yeah. We don't want to make it seem like we're not. We just are living, living life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but hey, you know, closing thoughts. Hope everybody's getting ready to enjoy the summer. Uh, it's going to be fun, you know. So take time, enjoy a trip with your family or, you know, your loved ones. And yeah, have a great summer. Um, don't follow me on Twitter. Don't friend me on Facebook. I don't care. Um, yeah, yeah. And I'll pass it to ABG. Don't follow me on Facebook, on Twitter. Don't friend me on Facebook. I don't care. That's good. Um, <laughs> my closing thoughts. Um, good to be back. Good to be back, everybody. Hope you guys are hearing this and enjoying this episode. Um, thank you guys for listening. If you made it this far in the episode. Um, and oh, so we we've we've changed our structure, or I guess our our stuff around again. I don't know if uh, after we do this that you're going to have our links or, I mean, everything is 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 at unheard underscore pod, right? So, yeah. 
I mean, that's where you can find us on everything. So I don't, <laughs> I guess it's been a while. I don't know how to, how to close these things out no more, um, but bear <laughs> with me. Um, me personally, did I even say my closing thought, bro? I mean, I guess no. I said thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, like Jared said, it's getting hot, man. Drink a lot of, drink plenty of water, man. Stay hydrated. Don't nobody want to be uh, passing out no heat, especially people got graduations coming up. If you haven't already, shout out to all the uh, the graduates. Um, yeah, man, just stay hydrated. It's getting, it's getting, it's going to start getting real hot. <laughs> but, um, but um yeah, follow you can follow me on Twitter at Young Without the O underscore A D G, and you can follow us just basically everywhere at Unheard underscore of Pod, uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, um, Instagram. That's everything. That's your one. That's your one stop shop right there at uh. uh unheard underscore of bot so uh, yeah man thank you guys thank you guys for listening all right folks and as always we love you we hear you and we'll hope you hear us here at unheard of unheard of